Big Z Reviews. With Dark Phoenix, uh, directed by Simon Kinberg, first time director, although a lot of rumors that he did a lot of actual directing when the singer disappeared. But um, this is his first official movie. He wrote and directed it, directed it, and he is really dis- I'm just really disappointed to see the X Men series that I was at times great, at times sucked, but to see it go out with a whimper instead of a bang is just really disappointing. Hello, Jean. Who are you? The better question is, who are you? Something's happening to me. When I lose control, bad things happen. But it feels good. So after watching this film, I really just wish that the last two movies, Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix, never happened, and they just ended with Day of the Future Past. Because they're both they're just really bad. Like, I, I'm not sure which one's worse, this one or Apocalypse. They're both incredibly bad. And again, they continue the whole idea of the decade hopping, which is just so goofy. Like, why do it, especially if you don't even try to age up the actors? Like, all the actors, they look exactly the same, except James McAvoy shaved his head. Like, Michael Fassbender, he looks amazing. I mean, he's in, in like, what, seven years? I think it's 1993, and the first X-Men takes place in 2000. He goes from Michael Fassbender to Ian McKellen in, in, in seven years. It's a pretty rough time he must have had. But, you know, that's, it's just, I wish they, I don't know why they chose to do it like that. And it's just, it's such a mess, the, uh, the continuity of the Monk series is such a mess. It's just, it's tough to keep track of, of what they want to, you to think. It's not even what it is, but what they want you to think. And of course, mixed in with the drama of this film is that, you know, Disney bought Fox, and this is the end of the X-Men as we know it. I mean, who knows what they're going to do with it. Personally, I'd almost love uh, like a, t- a very expensive TV show where you actually get to know the X-Men, and they get to actually be X-Men, they get to be a team. And then maybe for a big event, maybe then you do a movie that like puts the same people from the TV show. I love something like that, something more long-form. Because the whole idea with the X-Men is that they're a team, and you get to know them. And you've never got to know these characters. Like, for Dark Phoenix to work, you should love Jean Grey. And this Jean Grey, we don't even know. I mean, Sophie Turner, she's fine, but we barely saw her in Apocalypse. And now they're double, doubling back them now that she, it's not in her, but it's also the Space Force. Like, because, I mean, they're taking stuff from the comics, but they're, like, they're mixing them. And it's just, it, it's just odd. And then there's also some of the worst marketing for this. Like the trailer, they literally spoil the film. They literally spoil that they're going to kill Jennifer Lawrence. You know, Mystique, Raven. And it's just, it's, it's weird. I don't know why you do that. It's, it's a kind of same thing, like, but the idea that it is more powerful, but it's similar to the idea of how, you know, in the, in the last stand, she killed Cyclops. But that was because Cyclops wanted to do a different movie, the actor. And this one, Jennifer Lawrence didn't want to be painted blue anymore, so she's the first one to die. <laughs> so much of this film just doesn't work. Like, especially because the, the goofiest thing is Jessica Chastain as Vuk. And she, they, 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 they use the aliens for her. It is some random thing. And that's, I looked it up, and it's actually a panel in one of the Dark Phoenix comics where they show a planet being destroyed by the Dark, by Phoenix Force. And that planet is what these aliens are. But they are obviously Skrulls. They are Skrulls. So you got to see Skrulls in Miss Marvel this year, and you got to see them in Dark Phoenix, but they couldn't call them Skrulls, because I don't know if they, they, didn't, uh, they didn't own, as Fox, they didn't own the Skrulls, so they had to use something that appeared in an X-Men book that they actually kind of owned. And it's just, it's, they look goofy, and I wish that you didn't know what they were. But like, when you get to know what they are, it's just kind of goofy. And why, I don't know why that the, uh, you know, Jean Grey would trust this alien instead of her, the X-Men she's grown up with all her life. I, it, it's just, and they do the other things to where it's like, you know, the, like the Game of Thrones Daenerys, you know, going Mad Queen, 
And but they don't they don't f- quite do it. They have her like kill someone, but then she have a regret about it. And you know, like the, what things they do with it, they want it both ways, and it's just it just doesn't really work. I I, I it's, it's just not a good film. And it's so odd too. But at, at a certain point, like again, when they 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 have to bring in uh you know uh, Magneto and he and his group of rival X Men, you know that his group of, of mutants. And the way they bring it in doesn't make any sense. And they have to use, again, the weirdest choice of mutants. Like, the one mutant he has is, like, a guy with dreadlocks that he can move around and he can whip his dreadlocks around. That's his mutant power. And like the same thing before with Magneto and bring in the goofiest mutants. Like, use something better. Use more interesting mutants. You have so much, a giant cast of characters to pull from. And you choose the uh, dreadlock guy. <laughs> and, and it's just that like what they do is so goofy and but then when you get to it's funny there's uh, the third act essentially everything from the train on is reshoots and the reshoots is actually a better film that I liked the idea of something that the X-Men really never did the X-Men movies is something that Marvel does the MCU does all the time and that has the heroes absolutely destroy, uh, you know, faceless people, a faceless force to really show their superpowers on. That, you know, the, like, because if they're humans, you'd be like, oh, they're kind of killing humans. But, like, but it's not. Before, they always have, like, police, and, like, if the mutants were actually killing the police, that would look bad. So this, they have a bunch of these aliens that they can really go destroy. And I like seeing that, and them actually destroying these people, or these aliens. And... Uh, but at the same time, how it was filmed, it was so, like, the the director lost track of everything. Like, it was so confusing because you see them and they would all be killed and then they would, like, pop up again at back and then be, like, another helicopter. But the helicopter had already been destroyed. And it's, like, it's something, the continuity was messed up. Like, things weren't right in this train scene. You can tell that it was done, you know, quickly or, like, that they didn't have an idea of what they actually wanted to do. And if you're going to do this, I mean, go all out. I mean, go, if you knew that, at that point when they did the reshoots, they knew that this was it. So I wish they had gone all out, balls to the wall. And and they did some cool stuff. At the same time, it was all just kind of goofy. And it just, it didn't save a film that, I heard, I heard that the original third act was all done in space. And maybe it would have been better, but maybe I have more, but I, I, I don't know. I, I have to see it to make, decide. But as it is, it's just not a good film. I'd probably give it like a 5 out of 10. Like, I mean, if you've seen all the X-Men film, I mean, you got to see it probably, but I wouldn't recommend it really. Uh, thanks for watching. You check out the real place on my head and subscribe to that Z over there. Thanks. This has been a Big Z Movie Review. Thanks for watching.